Pakistani city of Karachi. The name alone is enough to conjure preconceptions of a violent place where Islamic fundamentalists thrive and terrorists hide. This sprawling port metropolis may be all those things, but as with all big cities, in Karachi the opposite is also true. When the sun goes to bed, Pakistan's new rock and roll generation gets up and comes out to play. General Pervez Musharraf's military coup in 1999 may have suspended Pakistan's democracy, but it also lifted the lid on a simmering rock and roll revolution. Five years ago, rock music was effectively banned in Pakistan, condemned as foreign and un-Islamic. Today, it's Pakistan's biggest entertainment industry. This is the band that started it all, Janoon. Tonight they are performing at a concert in Karachi which was almost cancelled because of security fears. yourselves for coming out and facing all sorts of innuendo threats. Thank you so much. Noon are Pakistan's rock and roll superstars. They have sold 20 million records worldwide and boast multiple number one hits in Pakistan and neighbouring India, bridging the two countries' deep political divide. Noon's powerhouse blend of modern rock, politics and Sufi Muslim poetry offered Pakistan's youth something they had never seen before. I don't want terrorism, I don't want bomb blasting, I don't want anything. I want just singing and on Allah, just Allah. Lead guitarist Salman Ahmed founded Janoon in 1990. But he's had to travel a very long road to get from rock revolutionary to rock gold. 
trained as a doctor and lived in New York before giving up medicine for music. And it was really trial and error to plant a seed of rock music in a country which had never seen rock. And it's probably the only place on earth where you could make all the mistakes all over again. For years, the long hair and jeans, which are now Salman's trademark, were banned from television in a Pakistan dominated by oppressive governments and Islamist fervor. I remember the first time I was on stage, uh, it was a talent show, and I was playing something on the guitar, and in came these Jamatis, which were, who were uh, sort of a religious student group. They broke all the furniture, all the guitars. I mean, I said, wait, that's our job, you know, to break the guitars and the uh, dr you know, drum sets, you know. But I mean, it was, they just didn't have any sense of humor. Uh, it was really difficult. It was an uphill battle at that time. Uh, but we won out because, the, you know, when you release stuff through music, it just permeates. It just goes out there. Karachi, Janoon is recording a live concert at one of the many satellite music channels that sprung up a couple of years ago, challenging Pakistan's strict censorship. Salman's brother Sherry, who's also Janoon's manager, remembers it well. In 1990, just, we just had one channel called PTV. It's crap. <laughs> and suddenly we had Star TV come in with MTV and CNN and BBC and Fox and everybody's like getting bombarded with images. And, uh, you know, even villages in Pakistan are getting these real old fogies watching Baywatch. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh my God, can, that just obliterated PTV's stranglehold on people's mindsets. And so then suddenly we started getting private channels and people realized that we don't have to kiss anybody's ass anymore. We can be ourselves. It's a sense of freedom which young musicians like 26-year-old Shalom Xavier could only have dreamt about before Janoon. It's only a Tuesday night in Karachi, but Shalom is heading out on the town. Karachi is the most happening place in Pakistan. I love being Karachi. In Karachi and... Uh, Yes, um, it gets dangerous sometimes, but you know, every big city has drawbacks and it's uh, one of the biggest uh, cities in South Asia. So, I mean, uh, violence is there, but uh, there's a balance and for the past three, four years, it's been absolutely really good. Charles, is it very necessary to have a smoke machine? I don't think so. In conservative and Muslim Pakistan, where the selling of alcohol is strictly controlled, most nightclubs are secretive places for members only. So Karachi's wealthy young elites hold private concerts at friends' houses in the suburbs. Fusion boys. Tonight, the band is Shalom's outfit, Fusion, which has inherited Janoon's power blend of pop rock and classical Pakistani music. Lead singer Shafgat Amnat Ali comes from a family with eight generations of classically trained singers. Mixing that tradition with funk sounds and a rocking guitar sent Fusion's first song to number one in Pakistan for seven months. properly fused classical and pop music perfectly together. They just come up with really beautiful music, so I can't see anything else about them, they're just great.
scene like this was unheard of in Pakistan just a few years ago. And the 90s have brought that in. I mean, the 80s, the youth had only options like gun culture and, and you know, joining gangs and getting into all that. Now, instead of guns, they're picking up guitars and their music channels are opening up. Lots of changes happening. Military dictator President Pervez Musharraf is a surprising supporter of Pakistan's rock revolution. It may have more to do with politics than music. In 1998, Janoon broke a huge taboo by touring India. That brave move created a scandal, but also helped generate a popular momentum for peace, which recently the Pakistani leader has been happy to ride. It was like the Beatles, literally taking over India. But the difference was, we're from Pakistan, the so-called enemy country, and you know, I was like, oh my God, we're landing in Bombay immigration, what are they gonna do? Like, oh my God, it's the, it's the Sayoni boys. They, the number one track was Sayoni. They didn't know the name of the band, but the immigration guys wanted autographs from everybody. It was incredible. And that, for me, I think all of us, was a sort of a paradigm-shifting moment. Because we speak the same language, same food, same jokes, same everything. And it's just mind-blowing when you actually cross over and you see that people love each other just like human beings. They don't give a shit about your religion or anything like that. Musharraf's support for Pakistan's new music culture has won him his very own band of groupies. an enigma because he's a military dictator yet we've had the most freedom of expression since he came into power in 99 you know you can say anything do anything get up on stage and play anywhere Sheriff rules <laughs> we love him because I mean from so far we haven't actually been able to uh, identify with uh, anyone in power in Pakistan yet He's the only person that we can actually relate to. We feel like he knows what we're talking about. He doesn't come out to people and say, no, you can't drink, you can't do this. Like, you know, you can go out till 12, you can party, you can dance, girls can do whatever they want. So it's been a good, it's been a positive change. He's the best. I think he's, he's the, the best. best around. He's the best. Yes, he's the best. He's the best so far. Islamabad is Pakistan's center of political power. Unlike the rest of the country, this is a modern planned city of leafy streets and comfortable houses. It's here we meet young men like Zija Fazli. Like most educated middle-class Pakistani professionals, Zija married early and is balancing a family with a well-paid job. But somewhere behind his cheery conservative appearance, looks a dark side. All right, this is my office. Uh, it's called Eterna International. And uh, this is a pharmaceutical business. And that is my studio next door. All right, that's Imran over there. That's my cousin Imran. And he's sleeping. Imran? Imran is Zija's cousin, but unlike him, Imran has chosen the radical path of becoming one of Pakistan's very few full-time rock rebels. Thank you very much. So, that was when, when you got your first guitar from Canada? Yeah. Black one. Imran may have a guitar, but he has no job or wife and kids. I couldn't do that. I couldn't maintain those two separate identities. It, it would just be too much of a chore for me. 
they were life is tough 9 to 5 is office hours sober hours dealing with uh, different people dealing uh, with business after 5 o'clock uh, uh, there is a more change i get into the other dark side descends over Islamabad, Zija, Imran and their friends unleash the spirits of death metal rock. Well, I think young Pakistanis are searching for their true identity because we've had so much of ideological interference you know either it's state interference or it's the western media trying to put you in a cookie cutter right or it's the post 9/11 world where everything muslim is now supposed to be equate to terrorism so there's a lot of confusion among young people they wait a minute you know we we don't sign up to what osama is doing we didn't sign up to you know uh, for, uh, about suicide bombing but yet we're not about hollywood you know we have our own identity the successful identity of rock bands like Janoon which also sells products in Pakistan only bollywood film stars get that job across the border in india it's a border that shalom and the other members of fusion are preparing to cross for the first time following the lead set by janoon's appeal for cross border cultural links fusion are flying to delhi to join a concert promoting peace between the nuclear rivals. We are very 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 excited about it. Yeah. On the serious side, I feel like, you know, the ambassador for the youth and uh, well, I'm going to make sure that I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> One hour later, Fusion emerges at New Delhi airport. But apart from the sight of a few turban wearing Sikhs, they seem barely aware that they ever left home. This place right now, you know. and the people and uh, the weather, the weather everything is, is everything same. Everything is just same. It feels like we never left. <laughs> We're back. It's such cultural similarities between the people of India and Pakistan that are being highlighted at this concert in New Delhi. the same early monsoon weather that Pakistanis will experience across the border in Lahore threatens to spoil this rare night out in India. It'll be a bad luck. But I hope it won't rain. At least for our performance at least. <laughs> the rain comes down. But it's not enough to dissuade the audience from witnessing another small break in the dark cloud which has hung over the two nations relationship for 57 years.
Eurovision's music quickly strikes a chord. And they are joined on stage by a top Indian band. Thank you! Thank you, India. So, uh, these guys have no idea what the song is all about. And in Kukujbi, I don't know what the song is all about. So, it's good to see you all. Let's do it again. fantastic the Pakistani band and our country band is also really fantastic and I think it's really a nice effort. It's about the love, peace, harmony and that's a nice gesture. There has always been this thing between uh, India and Pakistan where all these, there's this tension about safety and security and all of that and I think the fact that they've come here and they've played so confidently speaks a lot. कोई जानना ये जोश तेरा कोई जानना जुनून तेरा घूमता। A few weeks later. Janoon Salman Ahmed arrives in Delhi to promote his new music video filmed in Lahore and at Patiala in India. Here he is meeting the current occupants of his family's ancestral home. Salman's relatives were forced to abandon the house when they fled to Pakistan in 1947. Now it features in the film clip. The song's titled Gum Tana, which means harmonious journey, and features Salman and the famous Indian actress Nadita Das. musical metaphor but it's also a spiritual metaphor which people living in a subcontinent Indians and Pakistanis Muslims Hindus Sikhs understand instinctively it's a metaphor for harmony it's a metaphor for a journey We are on a journey. I mean, we're reaching the 57th independence anniversary, but we've been together as a people for 5,700 years. So friendship is inscripted in the DNA of the people of the subcontinent. And I think whatever the things the governments have to work out, they should work out, but they should allow people to meet each other. So, and this is what we try to do through this film. 